Howdy spacers, and welcome back to Blank Space Dolls and another of my twisted fashion mashups where I take a series of prompt words and create a custom based on them. For this creation, the words I was given were fall, throwback, floral, and mustard. Very random, right? But I decided a wedding theme was in order and what's better than a fall inspired wedding. So combining these words, let's take a look at my creation. But before we do that, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future creations. I have a ton more to come and can't wait to share them with you. For a little context, this is the throwback creation I had in mind while starting this project. Let's see how I've improved and if you can stand the cringe, I'll leave the link to the video in the iCard section above. Now let's write the vowels and say I do to this tutorial. As a base doll for this project, I decided to use Ashlyn Ella as I love her olive skin tone and I think that her strawberry blonde hair is just so beautiful with her skin tone. With that being said, I actually decided to keep her factory hair and use it in this custom. So what I'm going to do is actually give that a nice boil wash where I just hold the doll and pull it straight in and out of the water just to kind of straighten it out a little bit and then this is what it looks like once that's complete. And then I'm going to go in and let that dry and this is what you end up with. I'm going to be changing up the order of this video a little bit and starting with the outfit and here you can see a rough sketch of what my outfit is going to look like and I found this beautiful mustard floral fabric and I overlaid a sparkly tool over that and I used that same tool for the veil and trimmed that with a beautiful embroidered lace. For each of my projects I do try to draw out a rough sketch and keep little swatch patches so that way I can refer back to them as I'm creating. As you all know, I love creating patterns and we're going to start here with the bodice pattern and I start that by just layering her body with saran wrap and then covering that in masking tape very tightly so it's form fitting and then sketching out the bodice shape that I like and then I'll go across those lines using my X-Acto knife. Make sure that you're using caution when using any sharp objects and cutting tools because I have cut myself more than enough times to say you have to be safe. And then I'm just going to transfer that onto computer paper and I cover all of my patterns in masking tape so that way they're protected and I can reuse them later. And for the large voluminous skirt, I actually made this pattern in a previous video which I will make sure to leave that in an eye cards above but this is the general shape you're going to want and I actually did use two sheets of computer paper to make sure that I got it large enough and you're going to want to cut that out on the fold of the fabric so you'll see here that I have cut it on the fold. And then you're gonna do the same thing for the overlaid tool fabric. And this is what they look like when they're layered on top of each other. I love the effect that the sparkly tool fabric gives over the mustard floral. I just think that it looks so elegant and so nice. And yeah, I just couldn't get over it. It was so beautiful. Then what I do is you're gonna go ahead and pin all of those layers together just to make sure that the fabric doesn't move around because I am gonna be adding a trim to this. But you can see I added quite a few pins just to ensure that the fabrics do not slide around as I'm adding this trim to the edges. And I'm gonna go around the entire perimeter with this beautiful embroidered lace that I found at Hobby Lobby and I actually used this lace on the veil as well. Leave a little excess at the end of that to allow a little bit of overlap and then you're just going to sew around that perimeter and this is what that looks like when it's complete. Then I go ahead and gather around the waistband and hand stitch all the way around it just to make sure that it fits around her waist. Then once we've gotten the skirt into a good place, I'm gonna go in with my bodice pattern pieces and lay them onto the fabric and sketch around those. And I will also take my ruler and measure out half a centimeter of seam allowance to go around all of these pieces. Future Jacob here, I'm just gonna let you know, you will have noticed that this is not the material that I was originally going to use. This was actually the lining for my bodice and that's why it's gonna feel a little bit out of order but you'll see here that this is my final outer fabric that I cut it out of and we're just gonna close up those dart lines and what you're gonna do is you're, you leave that triangular formation that you had on your original pattern and you draw those on and that's gonna give you the guidelines to do your ladder stitch to create those small darts. Once you've sewn all the way across those triangular shapes, you're just gonna pull this thread and that's gonna zip up your dart line. 
Then you sandwich your fabric pieces together, good side to good side, and I actually put the sparkly tool in between this, and it kind of looks like a pin cushion because of all the pins in this tiny little pattern, but you sew around that perimeter, and this is what it's gonna look like when it's all trimmed up. Turn that inside out, and this is what it looks like. Here I am just testing to see what it looks like in comparison with the skirt, and I think it came out really cute. We're still not done. I also want to go in and go ahead and add some wire support to make sure that it stays in that shape that I created. And you're just going to mold that in there. And I also created loops and just kind of stuck that on the inside. And then I'm going to close the bodice using these tiny little eyelets that I got from Etsy. I am completely obsessed with these tiny little eyelets. I'm also very proud because this is my first time trying to inset eyelets and I think that they came out really cute. Tell me what you guys think. Then I'm gonna go in with these size four crystals in a matching color and I begin to place those on the bodice and I do have them a little bit more densely packed towards the top of the bodice and they get thinner and more sporadic towards the base of the dress. Here's one side complete and you're just going to do the same thing to the other side. Once you've finished adding all of the crystals to the bodice portion of the dress, you're going to go ahead and whip stitch it to the skirt portion. And I decided to go with the whip stitch here versus a top stitch just because I wanted it to be really invisible and seem like it was one piece versus being two separate pieces. I mean, look at how seamless this falls. This is exactly what I wanted, and that's the reason that I chose that stitch method. Now that those are stitched together, we can go ahead and begin to add the crystals to the bottom portion of the dress. I just start by placing little blobs of glue where I want the crystals to be, and then going in and adding all of those small crystals. Again, I wanted it to be less dense down here to almost look like it was ombre from the top to a really open pattern at the bottom and just to add a little bit more sparkle to the bottom of the dress as well. Now for the veil. I'm actually going to be taking two sheets of computer paper to make the pattern for this and that is because I wanted it to be really long and dramatic as shown on my inspiration page and I connect those using masking tape fold it in half and then I'm just going to sketch out a general veil pattern that I want tapering to really small at the top to really large and wide at the bottom and you'll see me just kind of sketching out a generic pattern again you can pick whatever shape you want if you don't want it as large or as dramatic as this you can just make it a little bit more simple but like I said I don't think I could really do anything simple so this is the shape that I chose and then you're just going to cut that pattern out as well with your scissors and then pin it to your actual sparkly tool fabric or your fabric of choice and cut around that. I did leave a little bit extra seam allowance just because I knew I was going to be adding this embroidered lace trim and then I start to just pin that around the entire perimeter. And what is this? I am finally showing myself sewing on my sewing machine in a video. Um, this was actually quite highly requested and I'm not sure why, I don't know if maybe you guys think that little elves come in and sew all of my clothes for me or if you guys just really enjoy watching it. I know that I enjoy watching it but I just didn't know that everyone wanted to see it that much so here it is and again I will continue to add these in my videos moving forward. So thank you for that feedback. Here's that veil once the trim has been added and it's so satisfying to see. I just love how finished and elegant it looks and just the sparkly tool is just everything I needed in life. Now you can't have this huge dress with nothing to support it underneath so I need to make an underskirt or a petticoat and I was actually gifted this from one of my friends from her mom's wedding. This was leftover centerpiece decorations and I'm actually just going to measure out where the waistband is in comparison to the dress so that way I know how long to make the layers underneath and place a pin there so I know where to cut. So I'm unsure where all of the footage in between these two clips went but all I really did was cut out a rectangular piece of this cream fabric and ruched the top half and then connected the bottom half to the actual layers of tool decoration that I had before. Then we move on to the veil clips. 
I'm not sure if that's the technical name for it, but you know, it's that little piece of decorative um, material that kind of decorates the top of the veil. And I actually just combined a bunch of these materials that I had left over from the dress, as well as these little three-dimensional, they're not silk flowers, but they're like a mustard color, little decorative flower. Um, and I just put those onto a piece of fun foam, and then that's gonna become the top decorative portion of your veil. Off camera, I also created this tiny little bouquet using the same items I used on the veil clip. Finally, to finish off the outfit, I'm going to customize the shoes. And for those, I decided to go with these basic red pumps from my stock box and a mixture of Liquitex matte varnish, Liquitex basic acrylic paint, and pearlized paint. And what that's gonna do is just give it a pearly shimmer. And then of course I'm gonna decorate the heels with those same size four crystals that I used on the bodice portion of the dress. Now that the outfit is complete, we can finally move on to the face up. I actually did shorten it a little bit in this tutorial just because I felt like the outfit was definitely the star and I didn't want to take away from that and you guys can always go back to my previous videos to see a really in-depth look at the way that I did my face ups but I of course begin with a blank face that has been cleared off with 100% acetone and I begin laying down my initial lines with my Karen Dosh watercolor pencil in brown ochre. Once those initial guidelines are drawn, I go in with my General's Pastel Chalk Pencil in white to begin to fill in the scleras. I also always use this same General's Pastel Chalk Pencil for the highlights on the face as well. And I'm actually laying down a light base for the eyeshadow to go on because I didn't want her to have a dramatic eyeshadow, but I wanted some lightness to be at the inner corners leading to the middle portion of her eyelids. And then of course, going in with my Schminky Soft Pastel in Rose Matter to add some blushing to her face. Then we go ahead and seal her face with Mr. Super Clear Sealant. And here she is after being sealed a second time. Then I begin to do some light contouring using this Mungio Soft Pastel in Tan. I actually shaved it down to get this fine powder and I keep it in these little um, paint pots I think is what they're called. You can get them at like most hobby stores. And then I decided early on that I did not like the dark red that I chose for her lips because I wanted her to be a little bit softer so I'm actually going over it with this Karen Dosh watercolor pencil in soft pink just to kind of lighten that lip color up just a little bit. And then I begin sketching in the iris portion of her eye using my Derwent Ink Tense watercolor pencil. Although I was trying to stick to fall tones, I decided to go with this Derwent watercolor pencil in grass green to add a little bit more dimension to her iris color. And then you'll see here, I'm just going to kind of speed through some of the layers, but I continue to build up those colors and deepen and darken the shadows, especially on her eyeshadow. And then also going in with Perlex powders in gold to give her a shimmer to her eyeshadow. Of course, for the eyeshines, you guys know the drill, circular eyeshines using my Liquitex Basic Acrylic in Titanium White. The catch lights or eyeshines add so much to a doll's face, it really almost breathes life into them. And then I noticed if she was getting married and she was a bride, wouldn't she be smiling? So for the first time, I'm like, let me try to add teeth into one of my customs. I don't know how well I did or if I succeeded, but I think it actually looks really cute. It kind of is like a little chiclet smile, which I don't know is great, but shes it's her wedding. She would be smiling, right? Here she is after the final layer of sealant. For her lips, I actually added the same Perlex powder I used for her eyeshadow into the Liquitex High Gloss Varnish to give it this really iridescent lip gloss look. To style her hair, I rolled it up in these foam rollers and sprayed the crap out of it with hairspray because, again, doll hair and I didn't want to boil wash it and potentially ruin all of the work I had put in. And this is what they looked like. And a little garter was added for detail. 
then we get her all dressed up and you can see where I'm kind of looking at where that double layer on the bodice was and that's why I say you guys don't do the double layer um, you don't need to I was just being really extra now I wish I hadn't but it still looked good and here I'm just showing the entire outfit together with the shoes and the hair and I do end up adding crystals and other details to the actual veil portion of it but again those are all details that will be revealed in the final photos let's take a look I hope you will all help me in welcoming the blushing bride herself, Rosaline, to the Spacer family. I love how her gown turned out and the colors totally give me fall wedding vibes, but also Anastasia? Just me? Either way, I'm so happy with how she turned out using my prompt words and I've been receiving a lot of comments on my previous video with some amazingly inspirational words to create a custom from. And we'll be picking the winning comment to be featured in a Twisted Fashion Custom in a future video. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe and join the Spacer family yourself. And follow me on Instagram for sneak peeks and other announcements. Just search at Blank Space Dolls, where in my world there's always a blank space. Let's customize it together. Until next time, Spacers. See you soon.